going, we don't need roads. David, this is seriously a huge honor, man. I'm seriously so excited. Thank you for taking the time. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump into this. You know, I've spoken with with so many actors who've played monsters, and, and, and many of them tell me that they keep their distance from the victims because they want to be a little bit more intimidating on set. I am curious, mm -hmm. what is your relationship with the actors who play your victims? Do you keep a, a distance from them on set, or are you guys just all kind of hanging out, shooting the shit? No, I'm the I'm complete opposite. I I'm usually just hanging out, joking around with them and stuff like that. I I I, I don't want to distance myself. Uh, I, now, if they need that from me, I'll do that. I mean, like I I there was actually a young actress on set for part three that was terrified of me, and so I deliberately stayed away from her just just so she wasn't. Which scared. can I ask which one? As as the little girl at the beginning of the film. Yeah. She well, that was actually very scared perfectly leads into uh my next question because obviously children are, are a much bigger part of this film than they've ever been in the series mm -hmm. do you have conversations particularly i'm thinking of like the mall scene do you have conversations with these kids out of character before yeah. going into it how does that work yeah um I, the funny thing is i have a background in teaching i actually uh i have a degree in elementary education so i I've always been a very big kid person. I, I used to be a camp counselor. I was, I was a babysitter. And I, I, I used to do a lot of children's things. So I love children. And so I wanted to make sure when we went in for the mall scene, I wanted these children not to be afraid of me. Because in the scene, they're not supposed to be afraid of me either. They're supposed to be very like, oh my gosh, it's Santa. You know, very excited to see me. So I want to make sure they were comfortable with me. So I, I talked to Damon. It's like, before we start filming, can I just come in and chat with these kids and do maybe a, like a and a session with them or something like that? And so that's what I, and I was in full costume makeup. So they were, they were used to seeing me like that and they could actually hear my voice. And it went well. It was a lot of fun. I got some fun little questions from them and stuff like that. They, we, I, I had a great time with them. And, and I think that had a big difference there with the scene that they weren't scared of me. As like, I, with, with that, the little girl at the beginning of the film, I, I think it's like, that was just something she was not having. We, we tried to have her even watch me get into the makeup so she get comfortable with it. And she was just, it was not what? something she, she was just not having. So out of respect for her, like, you know, I stayed away from her. Because I I I, did, I don't want to traumatize a poor child like that. That's I sure. just can't do that. What sort of questions did the kids ask you? Oh gosh, I mean, it's like you know, like how how long is the makeup? Was, oh, is that your real face? All that kind of <laughs> stuff. It's like they wanted to know about the teeth. Are those my real teeth? And I was like, oh, I gave them a nice little lesson on you know dental hygiene. So <laughs> it, it was fun. They're they're so cute. It's like especially like the, the the girl at the beginning of the scene that had the doll that I gave. Mm -hmm gave the doll to and stuff like she was so so adorable that she was so intelligent too so we we were we, she and i chatted a lot in between takes and everything so that's fun yeah. so i just have a really quick quick follow-up that means that there are there are people out there whose elementary school teacher is art the clown yes that is fantastic. Yeah. Well, I wasn't actually their I was their student teacher because I I I did still it. counts. Yeah, yeah, it still counts. It still counts. But yeah, I, I actually I, I never went into the profession after I graduated because I was like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> but so you, honestly, yeah. I'm I'm glad you took the path that you took. Yeah. Um, this is obviously a series that is that is constantly evolving, as is our understanding of of who and what art is. Are there things you really wish you had known on the set of the first film? that you know now that maybe might've affected how you play the character? Not really. No, because I'm, I, I, I pretty much understood the character then I, um, anything else is come as surprises because it's just the developments that have happened in this character's life since then. So mm -hmm. no, there's not really anything there. Fair enough. Uh, I have to tell you, I am so in awe of your performance and the fact that you're, you're able to say, so much without ever literally saying a, a line of dialogue even mm -hmm. though we never hear it do you come up with dialogue in your head for art even though we never hear what's going on in his head i do that all the time all the really? time I'm, I'm making up my own dialogue because i i i'm a comedic comedic actor so i'm used to dealing with beats you know I, everything relies on the beats that you need in the scene to make the jokes land the right way so a comedy is all about timing 
and <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I could have let make that last lot much longer, but I know we only have so much time. But that's why I intentionally do. I I just come up with my own dialogue, so I know where to make certain things land, and also things happen organically for me when I'm thinking certain things in my head, dialogue wise. My face just naturally responds. So like a great example of that was with the uh the costume shop scene in part two where I made the O face. I didn't even realize I had made that O face. It was just I in my head I was just going oh and then and I just went, oh. <laughs> It's like, it's just, boom, it happens. It just happens organically that way. So thinking about the, the dialogue that you're creating on behalf of art, what is a scene from one of the three movies you think it would be most interesting for me to hear what was going on in his head, to hear oh, that dialogue? Definitely the bar scene. That bar scene. And, and wait, in three? In three. With, with, with Santa? Yeah. <laughs> he was so you were just, i love how excited he was oh i love that i was totally channeling will ferrell's character from elf during that because i was like that's it was like it was like it was i was i <laughs> i had so much fun i had so much fun with that I, and also if you could hear the inner dialogue or oh, monologue going on with him during the 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 mall scene too because he's saying some really messed up things in his head Oh my god! I honestly, I really wish that Damien would do like a art uh, track that you know, like a like a commentary of what's going on oh, in his head in be that moment. Fun! Oh right? my gosh, that would be so much fun. I'm down for that. So I've got to say, I, before I press play on three, um, I had a lot of questions as to where or if Art would ever draw a line, whether he would kill a kid, whether he would kill an animal. And a a lot of those questions are answered in part three. So I no longer Mm -hmm. have them anymore, but in your mind, does he have a line? Like, and the reason I ask is because I'm right across the room. I'm looking at my cute, sweet, beautiful puppy. And I would love to think that art would look at her and go, Oh no, you're, you're too, I, I I would leave you alone. Is, is there a line that art will not cross? He might not kill a puppy because he's afraid of John wick, you know, (laughs) (laughs) fair enough. Fair yeah, but th- there's another line I don't think he'll ever cross and I don't ever want him to cross. And it's because I, I don't see him as a sexual creature. I see mm-hmm. him as very asexual. That's just, I, I, I feel like sexuality is something that's beneath him. Mm-hmm. That is just like, it's not something he's just not interested in. That's not, does not appeal to him. So I, I, I never see him actually committing like any type of rape or sexual assault and that i would just never want to have to do a scene like that either sure. i just because i i personally i just find that to be one of the most heinous things any human being can do to another human being and so i i, I don't think that would ever happen and i would be strongly opposed to it if it did ever happen because i feel it would be totally out of character as well fair enough well sort of branching off of that i want to talk about the art of crafting those scenes that you know are going to get a rise out of people. The the sawing scene from one, the bedroom scene from two, the, the opening scene of this one. Mm-hmm. What sort of conversations are you having with people on set, with Damien, with the crew, with the actors? Is is everyone always 100% in on those moments? Do you ever feel any pushback or maybe even feel hesitation yourself? There there might be some hesitation sometimes. I know, like, especially because it's more just because it's a very uncomfortable environment usually to be in. It's, it's like it's like physically uncomfortable sometimes too. It's just extremely cold and not fun. And I, I'm, I'm personally myself. I'm always so worried about hurting my my co stars. So I'm always wanting to make sure I'm not going to do something that's going to hurt them. And I'm always checking in with them to make sure they're okay, both physically and mentally. Because I know sometimes what they're going through is some mental trauma too. Because mm-hmm. you have to get yourself into some weird head spaces sometimes to, to elicit what you're eliciting on screen. And so I, I'm always wanting to make sure they're okay. And, and I, I, I know, especially like when you, when you haven't exposed yourself in such vulnerable ways, like Catherine did in the first film and how like Mason and Alexa had to do in the shower scene. And mm. in this one, I was like, that's, that's not easy. You know, so you're, you're having to be in such a vulnerable state in a room full of other people. And it's like, that's, that's, that's not fun. So I, I, I try to be as respectful as possible to those situations. It's like, okay, you've got to be professional. I appreciate that. Um, I had the great pleasure of speaking with Robert England yesterday. Oh, um, who said that you. he really, he's, and he said how much he loves art, the clown. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, <sighs> 
so it's the world he's my king throwing that out there do you have a dream horror monster crossover in the vein of like a freddy versus jason is there anyone you'd love to see arco toe-to-toe with i mean of course freddy's a natural one i mean i think that would be a fun one but i mean that's that's a given one um but um would you want okay you're a fan of robert england mm -hmm. would you want to kill freddy or would would you would the honor be for freddy to kill art I think it'd be more the honor for Freddy to kill Art. I think you know it's just like that's it's like because like Freddy's not really a, a tangible thing. He's more of a concept now because mm -hmm. he's like he just it's but that's like, oh that would be interesting. That would be interesting though. But it's like I, I just think it would just be such a fun fight to see, just like how it was with Freddy versus Jason. That was like when they're fighting each other in the dream world. Oh my God. That was almost like a Looney Tunes cartoon. I loved it. I was like, this it was fun. I, I was like, I'm in. God, now, great. now the wheels are turning and I'm picturing Freddy and art. And I'm honestly just picturing, I could see art getting excited yeah. about Freddy the way he gets excited about mm -hmm. Santa. Oh yeah. That. And I, I think I would love to see art go up against Ash. Oh, I think that would be just such an awesome, awesome. Does Ash have the chainsaw? Oh God, yes! You gotta have a chainsaw fight. You know, I would say chainsaw to chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, like so, total out of like Gears of War type of thing. <laughs> yes! You know, just like yes, yes. Oh, oh my God, God I'm God, loving this. That would be I, fun. We gotta call somebody, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, last question, and I'm gonna put you on the spot, and I'd imagine it's one that you have to answer um, carefully. Uh, I just spoke with Damien, who told me that not only does he know what the ending of this story is going to be, he knows how it all wraps up. He told me that you know what the ending to this story is going to mm -hmm. be. Yes. That's actually something we came up with together. And it's, we were spitballing ideas. I mean, we weren't even spitballing ideas. We were just having a conversation about a certain topic in general in life. And the idea came to us. We're in the car. It was, when, it was, it was before he even wrote part two. And we're like, oh my God, what but what if we put him in this situation? And oh, and that's that would be a great way to if if that's going to be the end of the character, that would be a great finale for the character. But also in a way, it could be open-ended to where if we wanted to bring him back, there would be a way to bring him back. Which I thought was really fun. But I I, I just like the this concept we have. And I I think it's a great place for us to build to to go to how many more i know we're, i know we're getting four how many more would you say until we get there i'd say like you know i mean i it's all depends on him but i'm like sure at least four and like not part four and part hopefully part five yeah because I, I like that i like the feeling of a part five a part five that's a like nice it, that's, that's a, a nice, nice number four doesn't feel right five yeah. it's like there's something like you know having a trilogy or uh uh, or something four like that. feels like, like you were meant to make five but then someone yeah, didn't let you it feels like you need one more it yeah. just doesn't it doesn't feel like a full hand he told me yeah. something else which i'm curious if you know what he's talking about i asked him if he knew what the last shot was going to be and he said yes but he's also tinkering with the idea of doing something in that last shot that will either be considered genius or he said well people will say he's an idiot for doing do you know what he's talking about by I think saying I, know, I think i know what he means i think i do no, I'm not telling you. <laughs> it's just us talking, man. <laughs> it's just us. I know, I know. But no, it, it goes into that whole concept we came up with because I, I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I thought it was like, oh my God, that's such a great way for him just to go out. That's it, that's it. That's fantastic. And I love it. And it's it's, it's so appropriate for the character. I, I And I'll end on this. I, um, I, I grew up on horror. I was raised on horror. Like I have a job covering film because mm -hmm. uh because i i was raised on movies that i should not have been watching at the age uh which meant i think at like the age of seven i think i went around uh, halloween as freddy krueger and then yeah. the year before was like jason and all the other moms in the neighborhood were like the hell man <laughs> uh, have you seen a kid as art the clown yet oh, so many kids so many yes! like boys and girls and there's just hope like, for the future yeah and that, that's how we came up with the idea for the the pale girl oh yes girl. it was because there was a little girl that dressed up as art as a convention and it was like such a great look we're like oh my god damon's like i gotta capitalize on that now before anybody else takes that idea and so that's where we came with the idea for the the pale girl like originally she was supposed to be a girl in just like a sundress or something like that and he's like no let's make her like this little art the clown type of looking character and that's that's what he, it came from it came from the kids at the cons
And oh, it's, that I, is I think it's a cool stick. I, I saw so many this past weekend at the con. I was at so many different kids came up dressed as art. I love it. It is so it makes me feel so happy because like like you said, you dress as Freddie as a kid. And like I remember like Freddie being everywhere when I was a kid back in the 80s, like going into shoe carnival and they had a whole entire wall in the middle of summer of just Freddy Krueger stuff. And that's how I was introduced to Freddie. So I think it's so cool seeing that happening with art right now and i i and, and it, it, i had that realization at a con a few years ago i'm sitting there was like one of these little kids came up to me and was just going on about how they love terrifiers before we even made terrifier 2 and i was like oh my god damn i i he might be this generation's freddy krueger and i think that is the coolest thing because it's like it's, I I and and I and I'm I'm hoping that our films are going to inspire other filmmakers to create new characters. Because I it's like how like Freddie and Jason and Michael and all those guys were uh, a, a new era of horror icons from like you know they from like Frankenstein's monster and Dracula and all those. It's like I feel like Art and whoever else comes after him could be. A start of a new generation new blood because I, I i feel like you know those other franchises as much as i love them they just keep rehashing the same thing over and over and over again we need new blood out there so i'm happy to see other franchises I, like that's why i love like pearl you know that character i was like what a, i i love that idea of finally a female slasher character i'm like that's a great we need more of that we need more innovation like that so i'm hoping that we are paving the way for more new characters, more new ideas. And I hope we're inspiring people to keep experimenting and trying new things instead of being stagnant and just, you know, trying to play it safe anymore. Like keep, keep pushing boundaries. Well, you guys absolutely are. If you can't tell, Matt, I'm such a massive fan. I follow you on Instagram. I think you're fantastic. Thank um, you. This was huge for me. So I really do. I know you have a busy day. I really do appreciate you taking the time. Oh, you're very welcome, man. It's great chatting with you. We don't need roads.